Hi, my name is Mike Gaben and welcome to my KSP campaign. Towards the end of the last episode, the Karayan 3 had just entered into the moon's sphere of influence, so we are here performing our rendezvous burn to get ourselves rendezvousing with asteroid Yoy, which is in low orbit about the moon. So why don't we cut ourselves to about an hour later? As you can see, we are closing in on the asteroid. And you may also recall from last episode that I do have an asteroid mining module that is also on its way here. should be here in a couple of hours. So once that is here, we can really get to work. And the whole plan here is to see what resources we can harvest from this asteroid. There you can tell that also there's a couple of other vessels attached to the asteroid. Uh, one of them is a lander. I would love to be able to fuel that thing up and get it down to the surface. Perform some missions down on the surface of the moon. Right now it is completely empty. And the other vessel there is the Arm B, a small asteroid chaser that I also would like to refuel. I do have a mission to capture an A-class asteroid and uh, that vessel with some fuel in it can certainly be capable of doing that. Now one of the issues here is uh, connecting to the asteroid. I have no free berths or docking ports to connect to. So what we're going to do is we're going to send out our engineer partner. And luckily he does have, along with him, another docking port which is in the inventory. So let's go, it's down here I think where my, that's an inventory container there. Yep, we have a docking port. Now the docking ports are too big to fit into Bartner's personal inventory and I don't have any of those uh, supply crates that we can move around. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of shuffle it up the vessel here, <laughs> attaching it as we go along. I should also mention that at the end of last episode, the Karayan 1 had arrived back at Kerbin Station in low Kerbin orbit and we're going to need to get my space plane down to the surface. So we'll be doing that as well in this episode and getting a couple of our Kerbals down, especially Jeb, who needs to level up. Oh dear, and uh, while we're in the process of shuffling, the Karayan has moved too far away from the asteroid for Bartner to reach over there. So what we'll do is we'll get Bartner to just kind of hang on here as Valentina maneuvers the Karayan back in, into a position that's close enough for him to be able to swing over that docking part. And oh, 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 we're losing Bartner. I think he's going to be okay, but I think we're close enough anyway. So why don't we uh, bring ourselves here to a stop, switch over to Bartner, and get some control on it. Yeah, he should be able to just swing that docking part over there. And there we go, attach. All right, so now all we gotta do, we gotta dock the Karayan and get Bartner back inside, of course, first. And then we gotta wait a couple of hours for our asteroid miner to show up. In the meantime, we might as well collect some more science. There's still some, some gravity science here to get, as well as the last bits of materials bay and goo science. And of course, we'll send out our scientist, McNan, to go collect. I'm not sure if you can tell or not, but I do have a bit of wobbling going on. I do have persistent rotation installed. And this is quite the ugly collection of parts. I have turned off all but one set of reaction wheels, so I'm a little bit puzzled why I still have some wobbling. The thing with persistent rotation is, is that time warping actually exasperates the problem. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make it stop. Oh yeah, and I got the materials bay down here. Don't forget that. Collect the materials bay. So yeah, so I've been doing time warping to get from biome to biome, of course. And uh, that just makes the wobbling worse. But everything seems to be holding together, so I think it's okay. Okay, let's store the last of that in our science module. And then we'll get McNam back inside and we'll time warp to our next bot. Whoa! Oh! Oh! 
Oh, smooth. Oh, great. Uh, so that was one of our radiators. That's not good. I do have... Um, Okay, let's get McNam back inside and we'll get Bartner out there to take a look, see if he can fix it. Um, the engines on this thing are the Kerbal Interstellar Extended Nuclear Engines. They are producing heat all the time, not just when the engines are running. So it's not like I can just go, oh, well, I'll just run the engines a little little cooler. It won't, won't thrust up to max all the time. It doesn't quite work that way with Interstellar. Uh, the camera must be coming over a pole. Okay, now it's settled down. Okay. Oh, oh, maybe I'm not close enough yet. Come on, Bartner, get in there. I'm trying to see if Bartner can repair this. I'm not even getting a message that it can be repaired. Oh, man. Perhaps radiators aren't like solar panels. Perhaps radiators can't be repaired. And yeah, and as it turned out, Bartner could not repair that radiator so I'm going to have to just sort of keep an eye on heat I tend to overbuild when it comes to radiators um, just for caution's sake so I'm hoping that this will be okay only time will tell in the meantime my asteroid miner is on its way here so I do have to deal with that just to remind people as well that this thing has no RCS on it, no kind of reaction control system, so it is dependent upon the Karayan to dock with it. And then the Karayan can maneuver it over towards the asteroid. It does have a grabbing unit on the front, so that's how we'll attach the miner to the asteroid. Boy, I'm really having trouble connect or keeping the uh orange target in the center of the docking alignment indicator and i'm yeah it's because this stupid thing is tumbling oh my god i'm getting so i mean i love persistent rotation but sometimes it's just a pain in the butt okay that's it i don't care i'm going to let's go over to the miner okay wait wait this is still the Karayan. switch again um, uh, so that's the asteroid. What? Oh, wait, wait. Okay, there. Now I'm on, I, I got the camera focus changer still on the front of the Karayan. There we go. Okay, so uh, flight computer, remote tech flight computer, kill rotation. Okay, let's get back to the Karayan now. Okay, and yeah, if you look at the docking alignment indicator now, you'll notice that that orange icon is pretty rock steady. I think from here on in, I'm just going to use the flight computer whenever I'm docking with an uncrewed vessel just to hold it rock steady for me. Anyway, the docking from here went pretty effortlessly. And then we moved the miner over to the asteroid and, of course, latched it on. Unfortunately, somehow I didn't get the video of the actual latching. Sorry about that. But once it was latched... That had everything around the moon at least temporarily resolved for now. I didn't have anything of urgency, so that gave me an opportunity to pop back to Kerbin Station and deal with some unfinished business there. And here we're just time warping until the station is on the opposite side of the Kerbal Space Center. And then we'll undock the Otter X-1 and begin our descent. That looks like a pretty good spot there. Oh, damn it. The attitude of the space station's messed up. Okay, let's just undock and get out of here. And Oh, jeez, the station's rotating back. Go, go, get out of here. Go back, 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 back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, what a pain. Just to explain, the station should have its main axis along the north-south direction. And I did have the autopilot on the station set for that. But when I started time warping, there must have been a bit of a wobble going on. And then the autopilot doesn't work while you're time warping, but persistent rotation still does. So it just kind of rotated out of alignment. But as soon as I came out of time warp, it started snapping its way back. <sighs> what fun. Anyway, with that all taken care of, the X-1 could perform its descent burn. We'll just put the red cross there just a little bit ahead of the Kerbal Space Center. 
Now, you may recall that uh, I haven't had the greatest of luck lately when it comes to putting space planes down onto the runway. In particular, my Columbia 2 space shuttle has had some adventures blowing over the runway at high altitude and at high speed. But clearly, all I needed was the right pilot. Yeah, this time, Jeb, no problems whatsoever. In fact, I went through large parts of this without even having to adjust the controls. I just kept it at a particular pitch, a little bit above 10 degrees there, and just let it glide on in. Yeah, Jeb made this look easy. So for the future, I'm gonna note where that red X was placed uh, that trajectories provides. Whenever I'm bringing down the X1, I will draw attention to the fact that if you look the previous videos, you will see that I had the red X in much the same place for the Columbia, let the Columbia just blast it past. It's clear that trajectories, uh, you know, the, the aerodynamic properties of these vessels, I think trajectories probably has a pretty simplistic aerodynamic model and so uh, can't predict complex aer aerodynamics like, like you get from the lift from space planes and the wings and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'll have to see where the right spot is for the Columbia and for the Dream Chaser and hopefully start to become more consistent when it comes down to putting these things onto the runway. But here we are coming in and like I said, Jebediah just makes this look easy. And all told here, once I got back into Kerbal Space Center, I saw that I had 1,345 science. I had obviously transmitted, or not transmitted, carried all the science over to the X-1 from the Karayan one. And actually there was some on the space station as well. And Jeb is now level three. Fantastic. And with that science, I actually got advanced motors for better rover wheels. Uh, that's an only a 500... Uh, uh, science points for that. I'm going to sort of keep the rest in reserve for now. Um, I'm unlocking a lot of stuff. I want to start using the stuff that I've been unlocking recently before I start to move on. But let's get ourselves back up to Kerbin Station and get the Karayan 1 ready for its next mission. And while we're stocking up the Karayan, I might as well check on how our science lab is doing. Oh my gosh. 185 science making 15 science a day. Well, transmit that. Oh my goodness. That is pretty awesome. And with that, once that was transmitted, it was time to send the Karayan on its way and its crew is Gilly, Bill, Bob, and Carol. And the mission? Well, these folks are simply going to be exiting Kerbin's sphere of influence because that bit of experience for just, well, it's more than just a bit, it's six experience actually, for sticking a toe out of Kerbin's SOI and orbiting the sun for a moment, that will put all of these folks up to level three. We will be swinging by the moon just for a gravity assist. Uh, we won't be collecting any science and no experience will be gained by any of these folks for going by the moon. But that'll get us out there a little bit more cheaply. And there was no reason to delay this, so we got ourselves out of here pretty much right away. We are coming towards the end of that escape burn. Want to get in nice and close to the moon. And then with that established, I do want to take a look at our inclination where we leave Kerbin's SOI. Ooh, that looks pretty good. I want everything to be in Kerbin's equatorial plane. Oh, this is looking pretty sweet. In particular, that our exit point from Kerbin's SOI. And remember, the moon's orbit has an inclination of zero. So that really helps when it comes to lining this up. So if everything is in the same plane as the moon's orbit, and oh my god, I really can't. It's close enough that I can't tell which is good enough. And now that we are on our way with no other burns to perform, let's switch over to lab mode, which involves turning on the gigantic solar panel rather than the little solar panels, taking a look at the science lab here. And this is only getting 0.66 science per day. And I have the exact, I have two level two scientists in here 
which is exactly what I had in Curb and Stations lab module. Of course, that was a stock lab module. This is a homegrown rockets lab module. I don't know. I, I can appreciate that this is smaller and shouldn't produce science at quite the rate, but 0.6 per day with you know two level two scientists, that doesn't feel right. Something feels borked. I got to get more lab modules out here that can produce more science for me. But with these folks now on their way, let's get out to what I have now dubbed as Yoy Station and get some asteroid mining done. I do have a uh, combination HAB module, science module being built. That will make this look a little more like a space station. Right now, I am just happy to see that nothing seems to be overheating. So that is a good thing. <laughs> So let's uh, get some more electricity being generated by extending these gigantors and uh, let's get the drills deployed. There we go. Yeah, start asteroid harvester. Nice. Okay, obviously we're going to do the same to the one here on the other side. We'll open up our resources so we can see. Yes, we are harvesting ore. I can see it climbing up slowly. That's nice. As far as the overheating goes, you know, now that I've busted one of my big radiators, um, Kerbal Interstellar, if those nuclear engines in the back overheat, they'll simply shut down the reactor, which is a pain in the ass enough, quite frankly. Of course, KSP will explode things, but it doesn't look like anything is close to exploding, so I think I am going to be okay. Now, I know the drilling also generates heat. Let's take a look here. And what I am looking at is that core temperature, which is climbing. I did put some additional radiators down here on the miner. Let's check these out. Oh, geez, I got to activate them. <laughs> Best activate them, I suppose. And there's one on the other side that I would activate. But I am looking at the uh, critical temperature percentage provided by Kerbal Engineer, which is less than 15%. And the warmest part, well, it's not the warmest part. The part that's closest to exploding is the hitchhiker can, but it's nowhere near exploding at only 15%. So I think I'm going to be okay. Now, one of the things I'm noticing as well is that somehow my periapsis of this orbit got messed up. When I was last here many episodes ago, I could have sworn I left this in a 50 by 50 orbit. Now it's more like 53 kilometers by 25 kilometers. I don't know, maybe I did something. So what I did is I set an alarm for my apoapsis with the intent of circularizing my orbit. So I'll bring up my periapsis and I'll probably tweak down my apoapsis, get it back to 50 by 50 once again. In the meantime, I thought I might as well collect some science, but while time warping between biomes, uh, rotation became an issue, and then I got this crazy wobble happening too. So I decided to stop trying to correct the rotation, and just turned off SAS and just let the thing tumble. That seemed to be the safer thing to do. But then after only several minutes of time warping, well, I had over 80 ore, so I thought I would fire up the Convertitron and make some liquid fuel and oxidizer. Okay, there we go. Start ISRU, LFO. Well, it seems to be working. My ore is going down, so it's pretty clear that the drills cannot keep up with the Convertitron. My fuel is going up slowly. Oh, this is gonna take, boy, it doesn't take much to fill those ore tanks. And then it doesn't take much to, to use up that ore either. This is going to be a lot of back and forth. Oh well. Well, while that ore was being converted, I thought I'd go around and check every reaction wheel, see if I can nail down what's causing this wobble. And I did find out that I did have an unknown reaction wheel turned on when I thought I had turned it off. It was on the RMB. And believe it or not, it was just the reaction wheels in the probe core here. That was it. But once they were turned off, and leaving the only reaction wheels active, the ones that are in the miner, the wobbling came under control. Uh, I ended up 
starting up the drills once again, filling up the ore once again, converting that ore to LFO, and then starting up the drills now for the third time, I only got up to 8.56 ore when the collecting stopped. Now that fuel transferring that you just saw me finished off induced another wobble, but that's what happens when you shift mass about. And I didn't notice that the collecting had stopped because I was in the middle of uh, scrounging up some more science from various biomes. At first I didn't really think too much about it. I thought, oh well for some reason the drills just stopped. But so, But when I went to restart the drill I got this nice message. What? Resources depleted? Already? Hang on here. Let's let's look at the asteroid. Yep, zero left. It is drained. Now I know this is just a B class asteroid. I know that's one of the smaller ones. But still, I spent way more fuel getting it here than I just harvested from it. And you know with bigger asteroids, you're just gonna spend more fuel, so even if it gives you proportionally more resources. Man, I'm starting to wonder if this whole asteroid mining thing might just be a great big waste of time. I certainly don't have enough fuel to refill the Kegel lander or the RMB, and I got missions for both of them. So let's first start thinking about what I can do to sort of at least get those missions underway, and this is what I came up with. Uh, I'm keeping it simple. This is a great big giant supply barge. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm just going to send this up to the moon, old school. It's going to, if I can't make the fuel there, I'm going to have to bring the fuel to it. And of course, I'm going to have to test it before I push it out into the Kerbal Construction Time building queue. It is a little bit wobbly. There goes our first stage on queue. Yeah, I think the main issue is right around this joint here, right around where the decoupler is. I'm going to have to strut that up a bit better. But it seems certainly fixable. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. Besides having a ton of fuel, this thing also contains uh, necessary components to form sort of a foundation for that HAB module and LAB module that are on their way to asteroid Yoy. The original idea was going to be to attach that to the actual mining drilling thing itself. But I've got a better idea for that because that thing's obviously going to be useless now around this asteroid. So instead, I'm going to detach it. I'm going to send it on its way to Minmus because I have a Minmus driller that's going down to the surface of Minmus to collect ore, but it doesn't have a refinery. So the idea is that I'm going to attach this to Minmus Station. The driller will bring up some ore from Minmus. I don't know, it'll hopefully be put to some kind of use there that I can at least do something with it. But that burn, the alignment between the orbit that I'm in, I'm in a polar orbit once again, the alignment of that orbit and getting myself to Minmus is not particularly ideal. The burn's not going to be coming for another four and a half days. So we're going to leave this thing in orbit. In the meantime, might as well put the Karayan three to some use and keep collecting little dribbles of science. Man, why are these numbers changing? Why is my apoapsis and periapsis changing? I mean, I went through the effort of trying to fix my orbit up a little bit, but look, the, the numbers are changing. Why? Is this why my original orbit got messed up? I don't know. This is something I'm going to have to investigate, but it's going to have to be for later because, well, this alarm shifted my priorities. Oh, the Kiko 5. Kiko 5 is coming to a maneuver node. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, well, let's jump the ship. I don't know what that is, but I'd better take a look. Oh, my God. Oh, no, it's this Kiko. Oh, my gosh, the Kiko 5. Have you forgotten about this? Because I temporarily forgot about this as well. Uh, the Kiko 5 is on its way to Drez. And it is just 20 minutes away from a burn that'll get it within 280 kilometers of the Kermes 1. Two hours and 40 minutes from now is that rendezvous. Oh no, and the Kermes 1 is my crude vessel on its way to Drez. 
And you may recall that, well, they have a bit of a predicament. We're, we're thinking on our, we're, we're kind of making up stuff as we go along with this one because back when it was doing its ejection burn to get it out towards Drez, uh, well, I had a bit of a staging mishap that staged two full radial tanks of fuel. So I ended up losing a lot of fuel and I, it doesn't have the fuel to be able to get in orbit around Drez and then be able to come back to Kerbin. So the plan was to rendezvous this lander and to steal the fuel from this vessel so that my crew can at least do a portion of their mission. And that rendezvous is coming up in less than three hours. Oh, well, okay, forget what's going on around the moon. <laughs> I think this is going to take some priority, but I think this is also going to have to be for next episode. I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.